Hello everyone, welcome to Jhook and in today's session we are going to see the deployment of a Spring Boot microservice on a Google Cloud platform using Kubernetes. With this session, I'll be sharing you the link of this guide, which you can see right hand on the right hand side of my screen. So this is the guide where I have composed all the stuffs which is required to set up a Spring Boot microservice on a Kubernetes cluster. So please look into the description section for the link and please follow along the same guide. If you are new to the Google Cloud platform, then I would suggest uh, to register yourself to the uh, cloud.google.com and they offer you a $300 free credit to try out their Google Cloud services where you can try out the Kubernetes and different cloud services offered by Google. Okay, let's start with the step number one where we need to create a project and for creating a project, go to your Google Cloud platform and click over here and then click on the new project and here you can mention the name of your project so in our case we can mention jhook spring boot kas demo you can keep the location optional click on create and yeah your you can see this option and our spring boot demo application has been created or demo project has been created let's move to the step number second and where we need to create a cluster uh, if you haven't selected your project then go here and look for the project which you have created so in our case this is the project okay then click on this uh, navigation menu on the left hand side and look for the kubernetes Kubernetes engine in the compute section, then click on clusters. Uh, if you're doing it for the first time, then it might take a little time to initialize this cluster services. So I'll be back when it's ready. Now our cluster services are ready. And if you go further in the guide, then we can see how to create a cluster. So click on create clusters. You need to mention the name of the cluster. So let's say I'm putting jhook spring boot ks cluster. So that's the name and you can keep the zone setting default if you want and if you want to choose then you can choose as per your location and then click on the create if you don't want to change any settings over here. We are using 1.14 version of Kubernetes. Okay, so uh, our cluster is being getting created so it might take a minute or so okay so now our clusters are ready as you can see a green uh, arrow or the green icon over here that means our clusters are up and running uh, moving to the step number third uh, the third step says push the spring boot docker image to the google container so uh, we need to deploy or we need to push the docker image so that we can deploy the same docker image into the cluster which we have created right now so for that we need to first look on our kubernetes application which we are going to push to the docker container so this is our spring boot application where we are going to uh, test a very simple hello world rest endpoint so this is my spring boot application where i have created one rest endpoint with hello which will return hello j who k a test and for that uh, we need to create a docker file uh, docker file is very simple uh, here i am using the open jdk 8 and uh, we are going to copy the jar file from the build directory so whenever we are going to build this project it will generate a jar file in the libs directory so i have mentioned over here build lib and whatever the jar file name is i'll copy it from there and then i have mentioned the copy command to pick the file from this directory and uh, named it as a ape.jar and the entry point entry point is the command uh, how you are going to run the Spring Boot application, so that is java-jar. So this is the simple Docker file which we are having for the Spring Boot application. Now we need to push this uh, Spring Boot application using this Docker file to GCR, Google Cloud Registry. 
before we push this Docker uh, image to the Google Cloud registry, there are certain steps which you need to follow. And for that, you need to install the Google SDK. Uh, since I have done these steps before, so I have installed this Google SDK already on my uh, laptop. Uh, but in case if you are doing it for the first time, then please download the SDK from here. And once you unzip this SDK, you are going to see a install.sh shell script. So you need to run this command from your uh, terminal. Then after it will ask for some option and then you need to put yes. Do you want to continue? Yes. And then uh, it will install all the prerequisite requirement which is needed for uh, running the Google Cloud services or accessing the Google Cloud services from your terminal. So all the four step, step number one, two, three, and four under the section step three. So in this section, you need to perform this four step. If you haven't installed or, or you haven't set up your Google SDK before. To proceed further, I'm assuming you have done uh, the Google SDK setup and you have pretty much completed the step number four. And now we are ready to uh, run the Google Cloud command. And before that, I would like you to switch to your directory to this path where the project is, where the Spring Boot application is. So you can pretty much copy the path from here and go back to your terminal, switch to that directory. Uh, there, yeah, this is the directory where our Spring Boot application is. Yeah, now you need to run the command Google Cloud init, and it will ask you for some options. So, here you can see reinitialize this configuration or create a new configuration. We are going to choose the option number one reinitialize this configuration because we have already created the cluster over uh, in our Google Cloud account. Okay, now it will ask which account do you want to use. So I am already signed in with rahulvark 17 at the red Gmail. So I'll choose the option one. Okay, so now here you can see all the projects which we have created in our Google Cloud account. So we are interested in the option number two. This is the project which we have created. So the option which is there is two. So enter two. Yeah, do you, now it will ask for the default compute zone. So you can select Y. And here you can mention like if you are in a Europe region, if you are in a United States region, or if you are in a Asia region. So just select the nearest one. Uh, in my case, I am selecting one four because I am in Europe. Okay, so the Google Cloud init, uh, the initial setup has been done. If you forget any of the options which I have entered previously, so you can follow along the guide. I have mentioned all the steps, only the name is that the project name might differ because uh, at the time of writing this article, I have chosen the different project name. Uh, else all the settings and all the options you will find in this guide. Moving to the next step, we need to build our Docker image. And for that, you need to remember, uh, we need to be into the project where our Spring Boot is. So this is the directory where our Spring Boot application is. So you need to copy this path. And after that, head back to your terminal. And you can see the path. Yeah, this is the same path. And you can verify the files. So here is the Docker file we are having. You can see over here, yeah, this is the Docker file. And now we need to uh, build and tag the image. So I'll insert. Okay, so let me explain. This is the project name which we need to mention while building the Docker image. And after that, you can mention the image name as well as the version number. Okay, so now we have built and take, tagged our uh, Docker image. Okay, moving further, we need to push our Docker image, which we have built to the Google container registry. And for the command is docker push Google container.io, Google container registry.io, and then the project name and the image name. So I'll copy this command and we can paste it into the terminal over here. Yeah. 
Okay, so as you can see, our uh, Docker image has been pushed to the Google Container Registry. To verify whether we have pushed successfully or not, we can go to Google Cloud. And here we have already selected our project, which we have created. Go to this option in the navigation menu. I have pinned this container registry option over here, so I can just click on it. And you can see, this is the image which we have pushed recently, that is Jhook Spring Boot. And you can verify the name over here also in our command terminal. So that's the name of our image which we have pushed. So yeah, now we can say our image has been pushed to Google Container Registry successfully. Let's move forward into our guide. And now we have pushed our Docker image to Google Container Registry. And here is the screenshot for your reference. And uh, the next step is to deploy the Spring Boot microservice into the Kubernetes cluster. So in this step, what we need to do is uh, we need to go to the clusters. And for that, I have opened on the left hand side, you can see I have opened my Google Cloud platform and click on this navigation menu and then go to either you can go to this compute section and then go to Kubernetes engine and then cluster or either you can pin this option. So you will have this option always handy with you. So go to Kubernetes engine, then click on clusters. And here you can see this is the cluster which we have created at the starting of this session. So now you need to click on the connect option. And uh, what you can do is uh, you can uh, run in a cloud shell. You can click on run in the cloud shell so that it the console gets open over here. It might take a little time. All right, now our Cloud Shell is active and we can move ahead in our guide. So in the step number four, as I mentioned, uh, we need to deploy our Spring Boot microservice inside the Kubernetes cluster. And to deploy this application or the microservice, we need to run this command. I can explain this command a bit over here. So the first thing is kubectl, then create deployment is the keyword which we need to use for deployment. This is the uh, Docker image name, which we have just uploaded to the Google Container Registry. And after that, this is the path from where it will pick this image. So this is the Google Container Registry.io. Then this is the project name. And this is the image name with the version number. So you can pretty much copy this command. And uh, you can head over to Glo uh, Google Cloud Shell. I'll open this in a new window so that we have a little bit more screen. Now I'll paste the command over here. And as you can see, our deployment has been created successfully. This is the message which we have got. Let's head back to our guide. And uh, in the step number three, we need to expose our deployment over an external IP. So right now we have deployed our Spring Boot application and it's running inside the Kubernetes cluster, but now we need to expose to the outside world. And for that, there is a command kubectl expose deployment because we, in the previous step, we have created a deployment. Now we are exposing the same deployment. And again, we need to mention the image name. So that's our image name. And then we need to specify the type and the type which we are using is the load balancer. And then we need to specify the port uh, on which it is running and the targeted port where it would be running. Okay, so I'll copy this command and I'll paste it over here. So as you can see, our service has been created and the same message I have mentioned in my guide. Okay, so now to check whether the service has been created successfully or not, we can use the command kubectl get service. I'll clear the screen so that you can see easily and I'll paste the command. Okay, so now here you can see this is the image jhook spring boot that is uh, exposed uh, as a service. The type is load balancer. The cluster, the internal cluster IP address is this and the external IP address is still pending because we just exposed this service. So if we rerun this command, so hopefully we'll get that IP. So yeah, you can see. Now we got the external IP address over here. So now our Spring Boot application has been deployed and now we have exposed the deployment on an external IP address. 
Okay, let's see, can we access this uh, hello world microservice from the browser or from outside of the Kubernetes cluster or not. So let's copy the IP address and head over to browser and uh, we need to mention the IP address, then the port which is 80 and after that we need to call our microservice. And as you can see, we can access this REST uh, microservice uh, outside of the cluster. So now we have deployed our Spring Boot microservice. Uh, we created the deployment, we created the service, and then we expose the service also with the external IP. So this is the way uh, we deploy our Spring Boot application in the Google Cloud platform. And uh, this is the way we can access it uh, after deploying. Now the next thing which you can do is you can delete the deployment as well as delete the service and for that what you need to do is first of all run the kubectl get service command and then you can see the services which has been created and now you can run the command kubectl delete service and the name so which is jhook spring boot so Okay, so now we have deleted the service. So our external IP which we have export should not be valid anymore. So I can access it from a browser and as you can see, it's still loading. That means our service has stopped and it's no more accessible right now. Okay, so right now our service has been deleted but still our deployment is still running. So you can see with this command whether the deployment has been deleted or not and it's still running with this command kubectl get deployment what we can do is we need to de delete the deployment also to clear our cluster so kubectl delete deployment and the name of the deployment and our deployment has been deleted so conclude this session. Uh, this is a very basic tutorial on a Google Cloud pa platform which you can register yourself and try yourself. And uh, you can use the Kubernetes cluster provided by a Google, uh, which is very simple. But yeah, you need to be familiar with the Docker command and uh, how to push and how to create the deployment inside the Kubernetes cluster. If you have any questions, just please put down into the comment section below. And if you face any issues or error, uh, you are welcome to put down into the comment section below as well. I hope you enjoyed the today's session. And if you feel like you need something similar content, then please mention in the comment section. I'll get back to you. Uh, and don't forget to check the link of this guide, which I have, uh, which I have been using throughout this session. So you can use it at your ease. And uh, so, yeah, thank you guys and have a nice day. Bye bye.